horrible. <laughs> it's horrible. What, why did you guys decide to breastfeed? Did they Was it because someone was pressuring you at the hospital or did you just genuinely want to try? Okay, so I didn't genuinely want to try until, like I said, I saw my friend do it and she made it seem easy. And then I learned about the colostrum. Mm -hmm, Colostrum. mm -hmm. Colostrum, yeah. That benefits their immune immune system. My gosh. (laughs) Immunization. Immune system. Immune system. system. Yes. Um, So I learned about that and I was like, okay, but that's in the first week of breastfeeding, right? Or the first three days. Yes. Uh So I thought, hey, if I just make it to that week, I'm golden. (laughs) This baby's got that in me. That's all they need. Yes. So the first one, I breastfed for a week. And then the second one, it was like each one, it was yeah, gradually longer, longer, uh-huh. and longer and longer. But yes, the pressure at the hospital was like it's intense. On 10. Yeah, it's yeah. on 10. They pressure you a lot. And then I nowadays guess. with social media too. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'm like, I'm doing what you say. Nowadays with social media, it's like everywhere. I feel like the pressure wasn't that bad for my first one. It was more pressure from the nurses. But now that you're on Instagram and stuff mm-hmm. and everybody has that everywhere, you feel even more guilt. Like to normalize it. Yes. Yeah. Which yeah. is a beautiful thing, thing that they want to normalize it. But at the same time, if you're struggling, it, it makes you feel like you're less of a mother. Yeah, because like shit. You're not it makes you like shit. Like, yeah. I can't. I can't do this. Yeah. I didn't feel pressured really until like, you know, when they make you take the classes and all Mm. that. And then like there's a legit class on breastfeeding and then you learn all the benefits and all that. I think that's when I realized I wanted to. Like I never thought of it prior. Like I was like, well, if they take my milk, if they don't, then there's a supplement at least. They so. sure do paint a pretty picture oh, at those yeah. classes. Yeah. They, they never really mention mastitis. Of course. No, no. yeah. Course and not. we will mention mastitis, uh, girls, to help not. you out. Okay. <laughs> and then it's like baby's here now. So hospital feeding struggles. Oh any my gosh. of them. I didn't have first. any. You didn't? No. Did they latched on uh-huh. good? Uh-huh. Both of them. Wow. Wow. You're lucky. No. Mine it was <laughs> sucking too hard. It was like it was horrible. It was not a good experience. All three of the kids? All of them. The last one, Harley did the best. Like, she went the longest. But then, I don't know if, like, I was too sick or something happened where I had to completely stop. And by that time, this is third baby in, I was, like, devastated. And it was my little girl, so I wanted that bonding. And I was, like, actually devastated when I couldn't do it anymore. So I went from not wanting to do it with the first one to, to actually wanting to do it with the last one. And then I couldn't do it. So mm. I was like, isn't this some bullshit? <laughs> <laughs> <Huh>. <laughs> okay, so for the first one, I feel bad because he latched on like perfectly the very first time. And we had like a really good lactation nurse. But then when sh- the shift changed... We had this nurse that came in and she was like, it's supposed to be painful. And I was like, what? no, the last time it wasn't. She's like, no. yeah, it's supposed it's to be excruciating where your toes are supposed to curl. Well, no, no way. Yes. And so we complained about her because she was awful. Freaking you out. Yes. Too. And I wanted to quit. Like and the poor kid was miserable because he was starving and everything, you know, it just mm. wasn't working and it was so painful. So we gave him a bottle and we didn't know anything about how much to feed the kid or when to burp them. They don't really teach you that at the hospital. So we gave him the full bottle. He drank full two ounces. Did he vomit He vomited the whole thing up. It was like those classes are (laughs) constantly puking the poor kid. We couldn't lay him down because he would start spitting up, you know? And then the lady came in and she's like, oh, you're supposed to burp him halfway through. And I'm like, thanks for telling telling me now. Yes, I know. That's information I could have used yesterday. It was awful. Yeah. But the next two babies, though, uh, they were better. They were better. I feel like they latched on really. Okay, so my middle one, he had this, like, lock jaw. This kid would, like, I remember the first you time you would put that. a little nipple on his lip, he would just clamp down. So you had to, like, really shove the whole Pitbull thing style. in. <laughs> and you had to, like, pry his little mouth open with your fingers to, to get him in to there. open. It was, it was painful, but... My last one was better. She she latched on pretty good, and it it worked and did you out go longer. longer with her? Yeah, yeah, it went. We went longer. What is um, feeding on demand or schedule feeding? Did you guys do any of those? I yes. just did feeding on demand. So you like, did whenever they're hungry. So explain you, what feeding on demand is. So feeding on demand is 
like when the baby's crying to eat. Like whenever they're hungry, you just feed them no matter what. Even if it's like every 10 minutes, you just feed them. So you're just um, like plopping it in there. Yeah, mouth. and then scheduled feedings is, is like that every it's three hours. Thing? Every like two to, two three, to hours, three hours, which is recommended, or I mean, which is what That's is what they normal. Tell you to do. They yeah. say the baby's usually hungry every two to three hours. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. some moms choose to do the scheduled feeding because it's like their scheduled type mentality. <laughs> so they do. But <laughs> I did amazing. always did the on demand because the yeah, because they're crying and I changed their diaper. They're not tired. They're hungry. And they you want to feed them. Yeah. Like that's how they get bigger. I feel like the moms who do the schedule feeding are like the moms who are like really like on top of everything and like anal you know, and like, like we're gonna do this like every three hours and like super I have a structured timer. like yeah <laughs> writing everything down that was Janelle huh look Wait, at her first of all <laughs> that was Janelle with Screw her little book guys. writing every three hours huh I her did alarm clock went off I had my timer every two hours but that kid never cried she never had to cry I literally would set my alarm for every it started off every two hours and then it went to every three and so on but it was great because the first two I fed on demand and I felt like I was just constantly feeding my nipples were sore it was just (laughs) it was miserable and so I read this book and I think it was baby wise or something don't remember you reading um and they mentioned feeding in a time frame like every two you know offer them the breast every two to three hours and I did that and it was night and day like she would bulk up on all her calories mm-hmm. during the day and then she would sleep longer during her naps or at night and I really liked it. On demand is the way to go. On okay. Demand. On schedule. I mean, no. Yeah. Like, yeah. You're scheduled. You're not on Sched- demand. You're scheduled. Scheduled is the way to go. But you know, I'm talking about you and, and I was I'm kind of scheduled. You know, she didn't okay. like cry in between the two hours. She Okay, so if she cried, it wasn't because she was hungry. Like, she wasn't showing hunger signs. It was because, like, maybe she was gassy and she needed mm-hmm. to fart or she had a wet diaper mm-hmm. or she wanted to be cuddled. But And she wasn't really a binky baby either. But the boys, like, I would always, um, more like my middle one, I would always offer him the breast. And sometimes he would eat or he would use me as a pacifier, too. Oh. And I felt like it was oh, just. Oh, yeah. When they start doing that, it's like, okay, no. Yeah. No, no, no. Yeah, my I I talk about you with the schedule, but mine's were kind of scheduled too, only because I went to bottle feeding, so I felt like exactly. I had to have a schedule with it. But how do you think dads can help with breastfeeding? That's hard with dads trying to help because you can't take off your titty and let them borrow <laughs> it. So, like, how can they help? How can they? Okay, so we had a system because the, I feel like we failed the first baby. You know, the first baby is like You're trial learning. and error. Yeah, You're, You're learning, learning, you know? So the first baby, I resented the hell out of him because I was just like, just do something, you know? Like, just so hold my titty up. <laughs> like, something. Yes. Get it done. Just do something. Go <laughs> so, get him out of the crib, Yes, at least. so I would pump. During the day, so I would feed him on my breast and then pump afterwards so that I could produce bottles for the nighttime so that he could bottle feed at night to let me sleep, not knowing that I would be engorged at night and still wake up because I had a pump Mm -hmm. because I'm Mm -hmm. super uncomfortable and in pain. So he would be feeding the baby and I would be pumping over here in the corner. So it was just miserable. But it's still helping. But it, 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 I mean, he, the thought was there. Mm -hmm. But the third baby, third baby okay so we had this routine it was like a system like he would go and get the baby and bring her to me and then he would change her diaper so that she would wake fully up for the feeding and then I would feed her and then I'd hand her back and he would swaddle her real tight and then he'd burp her and then I'd plop her back on the other side other side or to finish off yes and then he would put burp her and then put her back to bed and then it was like it was such a big change yeah but then again he was home because for the first two he was in school and gone all night Mm -hmm. and stuff but this one he was home so he could help a lot more but but that's a good system that's that's helping mm -hmm. at its finest yes i would make my husband like Regardless, I'm like, it's time to feed. So you have to get up and just sit there while I do this. What? Because Yeah, like, you're not going to be sleeping while I'm feeding this baby and falling asleep, dozing off. But I'm like, hey, get up. You have to help me. 
Can I give you a high five? Help you what? Just help me be there moral support. Like, (laughs) just be awake and, like, be there. Like, so, yeah, that was was our method. He was for He would wake up. Yeah, he would wake up. He would doze off here and and there, but I would be like, I'll nudge him like, hey, we're not finished. (laughs) <laughs> Let's go to the next she one. She still needs to yes. the other side. Yes, so he, he tried. Even the same with bottle feeding, too? Oh, Would yeah. you have him wake up, yeah. too? I'm like, if I lose sleep, we're all losing sleep I in here. I love it. We're wow. all losing sleep. Everybody's losing sleep. Equal rights right? all around. Seriously. <laughs> Seriously. I don't know. Ours is in a little different situation. Just because his dad lives with us and his dad's um, like p- paraplegic. Mm-hmm. So he has to get up with his dad at, at night. Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. he calls often to go bathroom. Mm-hmm. So I like feel bad waking him up double to like get up with the baby. So I never woke him up at night. That's too. Sweet. You know what I mean? Because like, nice. and then he had to work in the morning. Like he was the only person doing the income mm-hmm. at our house. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I'm like, but there were with our first one. I remember there were times where he's like sleeping, snoring, and I'm sitting on the freaking chair nursing. I'm like looking at him, like <laughs> my eyes are burning lasers through. <laughs> I hope you're having a bad trip. Right? Yeah, because it could kind of make you feel like, am I doing this by myself? Why are you over there snoring and I'm I can barely yeah. see and I'm breastfeeding this baby. Yes. Yeah. yeah. No, I hear you. Mm. Did any of you girls do a pacifier? I know, Janelle, you mentioned that um, your daughter didn't take a pacifier. How about the boys? Did they? Okay, so my first was addicted to the pacifier. Really? Yes. So bad that I, we finally weaned him off like at a year and a half. We That's weaned him bad. off after the bottle. Like, he was better to wean off the bottle, but that binky, yeah, like, he was, it was the case. his life. Mm-hmm. And we had to cut the nipple like cut the tip of the nipple and then he would suck on it and he, he like just broken. knew something was wrong. He was pissed. And then after that, he like threw it and he never wanted it again. Really? Yeah. The second or the last two, they, they would suck on it here and there, but they were never addicted. Like he was addicted. The first really? one. Really? You know? That pacifier is something else. Um, I think it's my middle son was addicted. The first baby didn't take it or the last, but my middle son was addicted. But he only wanted the pacifier that they give you at the hospital. The green one. Yes. Mm -hmm. And they have some of those at Target Mm -hmm. and stuff like that. But it's not the same one from the hospital. What? And he would know. He would know. Like every time. We've lost it a few times. And like there was times where we would literally go back to the hospital like hey we need one and they were like all kind of parents come all the time and act there's like a weight difference or something yeah they know they try to replicate it but it's different they know know that it was so bad like my middle son was so bad i remember we took like a couple's trip with these other couples and stuff and we went out there and i realized that we forgot the passy so i'm like oh my god this is they're gonna hate us like everybody in the house is going to hate us so there was another couple who hadn't left and they were coming out that way we literally paid them a hundred bucks to stop by the house and pick it up it was that serious oh it was that serious For everyone's peace yes of mind. i'm like we're <laughs> supposed to be on a little vacay and it won't be a vacation if they hear this baby crying all night, all night. <laughs> mm-hmm. my first one never cared for it like mm-hmm. i think he only did cared for it at the hospital and then once we got home hated it but my second one only liked it for the like first two months. I want to say now, like you try to give it something, doesn't care. Which is good because yeah. it's so hard to break them. Like yeah. you mentioned, like I think it took yeah about a year and a half, and I had to tell him that the trash t- truck, the or he was infatuated with the garbage guy. So I'm like, he took it by accident, and that's how we got rid of it. But it was so hard. Yeah, he loves them so, so much. Hard. It's okay. Now wait, did your hospital <clears throat> make you sign a contract? When you wanted to use the pacifier there? No, they. What? So yes. both of the boys got circumcised there, and when they they take them to go get circumcised, and when they come back, they had like a Did chupy, you? like a, uh, yeah, in their really? mouth, and they don't. And they the um, said they put a little bit of like sugar water oh, in stuff it, stuff on it, mm-hmm. so, and that's what like soothes them while. They're getting cut down there. And I'm like, whatever, that's fine with me. Like, So they pretty much not. started it. Yeah. Right? See, for my <clears throat> second one, so that was six years ago, they 
I asked them for a pacifier and they tried everything to tell me no. And I was like, just give me the pacifier. This is my second kid. Just give me the pacifier. You know, I want to get some Mm -hmm. sleep tonight. Mm -hmm. So they brought in a contract telling me that to sign here that uh, to agree that they did try to talk me out of it. And I invented for it. I've yes. never heard of that. And yes, it was ridiculous. What? what? It was at San Antonio Hospital in oh, Upland. That's yeah. Right. Which I love their hospital and I had a great experience. You had both but kids there? No, I actually oh. only had one there. But um so I'm not I have one there too. I'm not knocking the hospital, but I just thought it was hilarious that they wanted me to sign this contract about the binky that I've it could you know give that. nipple confusion and stuff oh, but you never know s- people are so happy it's yeah like maybe they sued the hospital because they never warned yeah, them that maybe. their baby would which is ridiculous because come to think of it that's how he actually got started on the pacifier he when he was little he got really really sick where he was like projectile vomiting like all the time and he had to be admitted in the hospital and they took him off of all forms of food so because of that they would give him the pacifier and dip it in this little sugary stuff Uh and give it to him because that was all he had so that's where the habit like started because it it was like obsessed with it by that time Mm -hmm. yeah it made him feel better so i guess that's kind of why they make you sign something. But because that's interesting that you mentioned the whole circumcision because how convenient. They can give the baby without your consent need when yeah. they need mm-hmm. it to shut mm-hmm. your kid up. But yet when you want to shut them up so you can get <laughs> like, no, 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 they're not like, doing no, it. That's, that's crazy. Ridiculous. It really is. <laughs> I'm going to write a letter. Right? <laughs> what about the something? <laughs> Contractions during feedings. Did you guys experience that? No, I've never even no, heard I'm, of that. I'm, I'm Are never, you serious? Yeah, I've never, never heard of that. Mm-hmm. I got the major with all three of them, and I heard that it's common. Like they cramping? tell you too, you get contractions like cramping in the hospital while you're feeding. Even after when I went home, you're right. I would get stomach major stomach cramps mm. while I was feeding. And did you bounce back to your pre baby weight really fast? Because they say that that helps you. Lose Is weight it? really fast. The contract, yeah. The first one, yes. The l- second two, no. It you took were a while younger, longer. The first one too. Huh? Yeah, it was. Only <laughs> yeah, the first one so. I was like snap back after like wearing a month. We're in a tank top exactly. the next day. <laughs> and the older I got, I'm like, okay, this is not going away. What's happening on here? So you never what? felt contractions after? Mm-hmm. No. no, I don't even think. I, I mean, felt well, I was, had my an epidural, so I didn't feel like half of my body. No, but I'm not saying like the same day. I'm saying like days after. Oh no. No? I've never, I've never wow. heard of that ever. I'm a freak of nature. Yeah, you have some <laughs> stuff going on. <laughs>